Welcome back to Chemical TV's News Bulletin with many interesting topics. An interview with the Vietnam Chemicals Agency and Industry on the Asian Regulatory Cooperation Platform. Furthermore, a statement related to polymer notification. Michael shows us various Thai transportation alternatives to beat the local traffic jams. And to start with, some takeaways from the Tuesday sessions. It was a great session on Korean chemical regulations. As Mr. Che from MOE assured us that they are using this chemical safety policy forum to improve relevant chemical regulation so that businesses can do their businesses more easier the manner. Then also, Ms. Lee from COSHA assured again us that they recognize some of the issues shared by businesses are identified and that they're making very efforts to improve uh, those difficulties. Then also the, the pattern we saw in the chemical regulation is going toward the transparency. As In Wan Jun from Kim and Chang indicated that we definitely need to disclose under applicable regulations uh, more about the chemical information, but there are ways to protect your CVI under Korean regulations. We had a session on authorization and restriction but funnily enough, there was actually a link to the preceding uh, session where Sun Mei, uh, who is Malaysian, uh, made a very nice uh, chart showing how worldwide, uh, both the risk assessment and the way we manage risks for chemicals and regulate them, evolves. And the whole session on authorization and restriction was about evolution. Uh, Christian uh, um, gave us an, uh, in, uh, an insight into the way the authorization restriction processes are evolving, whereas the man from ECHA uh, showed us why this is happening. And it's happening because ECHA cannot cope with the volume uh, of applications of authorization and the complexity of, uh, of the restrictions. And so you see that in Europe, even though we were meant to be the most advanced, things are still uh, evolving. On the practical side of things, because that's the strength uh, of the ChemCons, Leo and Fabian gave really good insights into the latest on how to do risk assessment and how to do risk management measures inside your, your, your company. Fabian made an interesting uh, remark there that also toxicologists uh, are evolving in the way that they assess risks and how they, uh, uh, how they modulate them and, and model them in their, in their systems. The final presentation was a little bit off the wall because Rudiger uh, had a different uh, subject, which was dust and the hazards of dust. But again, the red thread in that was the assessment of these risks is evolving and changing. And right now, uh, on none of these issues, anybody can say exactly how things look like. So we're in full development and uh, surely uh, an, an issue for the next ChemCon. After Tuesday's recap, let's go to Michael. Hi, where are you? I'm in a tuk-tuk, one of Bangkok's iconic three-wheel vehicles. Is that the best way to get around Bangkok? Well, that depends. Bangkok is a big city and it's got a whole bunch of different ways to get around. Depending on where you are in the city and at what time of the day, different modes of transportation are best. If I'm downtown and it's rush hour, then most likely taking the SkyTrain or BTS or the subway, MRT, is the best option. If you want to save a little money, you can walk or take a bus. If you want speed and thrill, you can take a motorcycle taxi. If you're looking for a more private option, maybe with some air conditioning, you can always get a taxi or a luxury VIP karaoke van with your own private driver. Hit it. Thanks for your terrific traffic story. Can you later in this news bulletin tell us more about the typical Thai network of waterways, including a less known aspect depicted by this stylus elephant called Evening Tide. Whoa, Evening Tides. Hmm, you know what? I'm gonna think about that while I wait to board Bangkok's most scenic means of transportation, the boat. Evening Tides. The cartoon for today's interview with Gil Perez and Viet Thang Le also shows several ways of transportation, but the actual focus is the Asian Regulatory Cooperation Platform. Uh, we're currently at ChemCon Asia 2024. Let's 
fast forward to ChemCon Asia 2026. Then you both can share the achievements of the platform and the latest news on Vietnam. What achievements would you like to present at ChemCon Asia 2026 and why? And what progress do you hope to make the coming years? So let me start with uh, the platform. So we've been actually advocating for recognition under the ACCSQ, which is the ASEAN Consultative Council for Quality, Standards and Quality, right? Um, to be recognized as a working group under that um, ACCSQ. So essentially what that happened, what, when that ha recognition happens is we will have a more uh, structured platform where both regulators and industry can, can interact with each other. They can come up with more regional-wide um, requirements, okay? And as well as greater commitment from authorities to really engage. Because right now it's all voluntary. We've developed a lot of guidelines, but they still remain voluntary up until perhaps when we have that recognition from ACCSQ. Okay, and Fiatang, what is the latest news to be presented at ChemCon Asia 2026? Uh, yes, it's uh, our new law. Uh, the new law is also our new willing to uh, upgrade our legislation uh, framework for chemical management to harmonize uh, the regional and international uh, legislation and I hope in the coming year when the new law is come into force uh, you can see uh, um, the uh, our legislation green um, to comply with the international standard and support uh, the industry uh, as much as we can. Please watch the complete interview on our YouTube channel. After this interview on the Asian Regulatory Cooperation Platform, let's connect with Michael and learn more about Klongs. Yes, sir. Bangkok was once known as the Venice of the East, and canals just like this one crisscrossed the entire city. They were the arteries of a city, carrying boats and people. Then, when cars became really popular and Bangkok grew so quickly, we paved over a lot of these canals. However, in some areas of the city and surrounding areas, you can still find some places that embrace that old way of life. The stilt houses, the boats, and the iconic floating markets of the past. Khlong Lat Mayong Floating Market is one of the best places near Bangkok to experience that old way of life. And it's also an excellent place to sample some local cuisine. Just this way over here. Which is why I'm gonna buy a whole bunch and I'll bring some snacks back for you. Watch your head. I've heard it mentioned that the tide is very important in Bangkok. Why is that? Bangkok is quite close to the ocean. The water in the Chao Phraya is brackish, which means it's quite salty. Speaking of evening tide, traditionally, many homes like this one were built on stilts to accommodate the rising and lowering of the tide. Right now, looks like a Thai tide. The Thai stilt houses harmonize with the tidal rhythms of the Klongs, and they're ingeniously built to accommodate these tidal fluctuations. I love your stories and the magic markers of Bangkok. Here is a hint on tomorrow's destination, this elegant elephant exotic fruit herd. By the way, I hope you can join us at tonight's social event. Whoa, these are beautiful. Hopefully I can make it to the social event. These look like Thai fruit. And I know you can buy Thai fruit at any large or small market. For tomorrow, I don't want just a small market. Make it a special experience. And to help you with tonight's location, let this elephant, Tuan Yuan, guide you. Tuan Yuan symbolizes togetherness and family uniting. A fitting theme for tonight's event. Oh, that's quite the parade of elephants. I'll see you tonight. 
More Michael in What's What in a What. But first time for something completely different in the statement of the day on Polymer Notification. Today with Helen Huangfu from Lubrizol. Helen, welcome. Thank you. Helen, is Bangkok traffic like Shanghai or is Bangkok traffic also for you a challenge? Uh, definitely a new adventure. Traffic situations are different all around the globe and also polymer notification systems differ a lot. What is important for industry to focus on related to polymer notification in the Asia-Pacific region? Uh, for the companies, I think that uh, we need to pay attention to uh, the uh, detailed regulatory requirement on polymer notifications across the Asia-Pacific countries because even the framework are very similar but the detailed regulatory requirements still varies from country to country. So to ensure the compliance, we need to have very good understanding to, on those differences uh, yeah, to ensure the compliance. That's a tough job, definitely. So there are many differences, but what is your statement? Parliament notification should be harmonized. Helen, thank you very much for your statement on polymer notification. Now, Michael, on what you can notice when visiting a what in today's episode of What's What in a What. Today, we'll be talking about meditation. It's something that you might see a lot of Buddhist monks doing, but it's something that's also popular among non-monks as well. It's a way of clearing your mind using various physical and mental techniques. An important aspect are the mudras, or hand gestures, that are depicted. These mudras have a specific meaning and symbolize a different state of mind or teaching. One of the most common mudras depicted with the Thai Buddha is the Dhyana Mudra, also known as the Meditation Mudra. This symbolizes the state of concentration and inner peace. Another common mudra depicted with the Thai Buddha is the Varada Mudra, the gifts giving mudra, symbolizing giving help or protection. Meditation is a way to let go of wants and desires and simply find happiness within oneself. Thank you for enlightening us on this. I'm sure a delegates that will participate in the Unknown Bangkok Tour or the Temple of Dawn Tour will recognize a lot. But that's later today. We start our Wednesday program with updates from Southeast Asia, where we are proud to present the authorities from Thailand, Malaysia, Vietnam, Indonesia and the Philippines. And all these countries are also involved in the Asian Regulatory Cooperation Platform. After that, we dive into the details of the various approaches to the notification of polymers and new chemicals around the globe. In the afternoon, we're going to the other side of the globe, where we take a look at the Americas, with Tosca updates from the USA, and we look at Canada and Latin America. Thank you for watching, and for those in Bangkok, enjoy the sightseeing, and looking forward to seeing you at tonight's social event. <laughs>